Out of the Ordinary Insights, brought to you by Investec Specialist Bank. I'm speaking to Dr. Richard Ward, the CEO of Lloyd's. You're watching Captains of Industry here on CNBC Africa. Just before we went into the break, you, mm -hmm. you mentioned the meat market, yes. the broker network, obviously key to your distribution model. Yeah. Can you give me a little more clarity or color around your distribution model? Of course. I mean, brokers are fundamental to the Lloyd's market. We don't have our own distribution. We work with the broking community and use the brokers or work with the brokers to get our product out to the clients. So for us, the challenge is to make sure that the brokers, particularly those operating in the local markets, understand what we can offer in London to help their clients manage their risk. And that's what the Meet the Market event is about today. We have underwriters from London who've flown over here to meet the brokers. We have local underwriters here who are coming here to meet the brokers. And we have the brokers as well. And hopefully with that exchange of ideas, with that networking, we'll get a better understanding of how we can design product to meet the specialist risks that you need managed here in this market. The South African Broker Network, is it being receptive to, to your uh, foray? Yes it, yes, it is. I mean, I was at a reception last night, uh, which one of the major brokers here hosted uh, for me, and I was able to meet uh, the broking community and their clients, and I was very well received. You know, Lloyd's has a long trading relationship with the South African market. It goes back decades, probably centuries actually. And, and so, yes, people do understand the importance of Lloyd's and how it can help. Um, we certainly understand the importance of the brokers, and so we're just bringing those two together. How do you react to the negative news flow out of South Africa? We've had lots of it mm. of late. Uh, I was yeah. in Davos in, in Switzerland at the World yeah. Economic Forum, and we just kept getting a barrage of negativity from South Africa. What's your response when you see these news headlines? I think the challenge is to really try and understand the, the true facts rather than the, the headlines in, in the newspapers. And you mean journalists make it all sensational? Well, there, there is a tendency to do that, particularly in the, in the, in the press. Uh, and in, in the UK, when we're dealing with the press, we know which way the press is aligned generally, where their allegiance is in terms of political alignment. It's more challenging here in South Africa. So my, my approach is to generally take most of that with a pinch of salt and really try and get beneath the covers and understand what the true position is, which is why I'm here speaking to the business community, understanding what it is like from their perspective, speaking to um, politicians and uh, government officials here in Joburg, speaking to... Do you get a sense of comfort after engaging with the business community yes, and the politicians? It's yes, important. I am more reassured actually, yes, yes. I mean, the picture is not as bleak as it is painted in the press. And I have spent time in Johannesburg. I've driven around Johannesburg. And I'm impressed at the activity in the city, the economic activity, the infrastructure in the city. And so clearly a lot of progress is being made. Not ignoring the challenges. We know there's significant challenges here. And yesterday I, I went and visited a, a community program that was supporting Nokapila and met with the workers there, the charity workers there, and the children they're working with. And there's some clearly some very uh, uh, significant major challenges that you have to deal with around poverty, around unemployment. Hopefully, government is getting to grips with those issues, and that's, I'm sure, something the press continually reports on. So I can't ignore that. But I do believe progress is being made. Richard, earlier you mentioned that 15 years, maybe more, mm. in South Africa, you've got a long association going back decades mm. and decades with the territory. Mm. I want to come back to a point that I pulled up earlier and saying, mm. what about the rest of your Africa exposure? You know, yeah. you've got 160 million consumers in Nigeria. Businesses yeah. obviously taking advantage of yeah. that consumer environment. Shouldn't you be following we, their lead? We are. And in, in South Africa, we're able to have a presence here because of the regulatory framework, we're able to actually be based in South Africa and do underwriting on the ground and offer products directly to the South African market. Um, we have that opportunity in Mauritius, we can do it in Namibia, but you mentioned Nigeria. In Nigeria we are unable to operate on the ground as a direct insurer, so what we do in Nigeria is operate as a reinsurer. So we help the local insurance companies manage their risk by taking some of it off them and reinsuring it into the Lloyds market. So we have business models suited to the regulatory, to the, uh, fr regulatory fr framework. Regulatory framework yes. How different is the regulatory framework in East Africa and do you have a presence there? In East Africa we operate primarily as a reinsurer as East Africa but we're continually looking at our license network 
to see whether it is worth establishing a presence on the ground to do direct insurance, which in a, in a sense puts you into competition with the local domestic insurers, or whether we're better positioned to work as a reinsurer in providing that specialist skill to the domestic companies. And if I look at the African uh, continent, we're primarily a reinsurer here more than we are a direct insurer. We do roughly $700 million worth of business here in South Africa, and uh, I, about 40 to 50 percent of that is actually reinsurance business. I want to touch on a couple of, of softer issues mm. and those of, of leadership. This is a, a global organization. How do you manage to, to lead an organization that is so well diversified mm. geog geographically? You spend a lot of time on the plane. It's challenging. I do spend quite a bit of time on the plane. I mean, I think it's very important when dealing with a global organization that everyone in the organization understands what, what the strategy is for the organization, what the vision is for the organization, so they can align themselves uh, behind that. They need to understand what the culture of the organization is and what are the values of the organization. So I spend a lot of time with the staff either... So you're visible? Person. Leaders have to be visible. You cannot be an invisible leader. I'm a firm believer if you want to lead an organization, you have to get out in front of that organization when dealing with the public and you have to get inside the organization when dealing with your staff. So I spend a lot of time visiting my overseas offices, meeting the staff. I spend a lot of time in London just getting out and about, meeting the staff in their workplace, understanding the issues that they face and so that they can interact with me and understand the issues that I'm trying to deal with as well. And then I do a lot of formal set pieces with the staff, big staff briefings where we video conference all our overseas offices into the staff briefings so they can hear the same message from me. And consistency of message is absolutely key. So my staff in China, my staff in South Africa here, my staff in America, they need to say, hear the same message that my staff in London. Again. How do you define the culture within Lloyd's? Um, I wouldn't use one single word to define the culture, but I think it's a very open and honest culture, one where people absolutely value integrity. I think that's fundamental to the business. I think it's challenging. I try to create an environment where people feel they can challenge me, they can challenge my colleagues, they can challenge the board, that we can have a constructive debate and then come to a conclusion and act, act on it. So openness, honesty, integrity. What do you look for in terms of the people that you surround yourself with? I look for people who exhibit those, those traits, those characteristics. I look for people who have an intellectual ability that uh, they're willing to apply to challenge. So I don't want people who say yes. I want people who say, have you thought of this? What about doing it that way? I want people to constructively challenge the organisation and constructively challenge myself and through that we'll get better decisions that will be better for the organisation. But I also look for people who want to have fun. I spend a lot of time at work, a lot of time, far more time at work than I spend at home. And then so this that touches on this issue of balance that I always chat to, to captains about. Yeah. So is that how you achieve balance, by having fun at work? I, in, in part, yes. I like to work with people whose company I enjoy because I spend so much time with them. So to, you've got to be able to have a bit of fun in the workplace because of so much time being spent in the workplace. Now, of course I have my family time and that's very important to me, but my family are very understanding that to do this job, and I've chosen to do this job, I need to spend a lot of time at work and I need to spend a lot of time traveling. So getting that balance right is challenging Part of it is having people at work whose company I enjoy. Some solutions that have been tabled by people who battle with this mm. balance issue, uh, when you are with your family, you make one exclusive mm. day a week, whether it's your Saturday or your Sunday, mm. where that is family time. Do you go to, to that extent? Do you need to kind of segment your time or do you just go with the flow? I'm dealing with a business that's operating globally. And so I'm afraid the workday doesn't start at 8 a.m. and stop at 7 p.m. or whatever. It is 24 hours a day. So it's very difficult to do this job and say, right, I'm going to ignore work for the next two days. But you, you can't do that. And that, I don't think that's what the board of Lloyd's is paying me to do. So yes, I am taking an interest in work at the weekends. But what I do do is set aside time, specific time at the weekends to do things just 
with the family, but the family recognise that at some point in the weekend something might crop up that I'll have to have to deal with. So I fly back uh, to London uh, overnight on Friday. I get back in Saturday morning. I know the first thing I'm going to do on Saturday morning is take my younger son out on his racing bike. I'll be on my racing bike and we'll ri ride around Richmond Park for a couple of laps, do two hours out on the bicycles, just having fun, and that will be family time. And I won't be able to look at my mobile when I'm out on my bicycle. But I know when I get back, I'm going to check up and see what's happening. Richard, you, you sit at, at the helm of a, of a global organisation. Advice to aspirant leaders out there? Um, advice to aspirant leaders? Well, I think the, the most important thing for me as a leader is that I'm passionate about the business I'm leading. And so you really have to believe in the business that you lead. And I'm very fortunate working for Lloyds in the insurance market where I believe we are doing something of real value to society. And for me that enables me to have passion about my business, passion about the people I work with. And I, I think that's the most important thing actually in a leader. You've got to have a bit of passion. Of course you need drive and you need ambition. Um, I think you need a bit of humility as well. You've got to be able to uh, deal with disappointment and success in the, in the same way. I think you've got to be able to relate to staff at all levels. Um, the risk to leaders is becoming detached and arrogant. And so I think you need to continually be grounded and you get that grounding by spending time with staff at all levels in the organisation of course. And then when I go home I get very grounded and reminded of what my role is at home. I'm not the CEO at, at home. You've been in the hot seat at yeah. Lloyd's for seven years now. Yeah. How much longer are you going to captain this ship? As long as I'm enjoying it and as long as the board think that I'm doing a good job because it is a fantastic position to be in.